So now discuss programmable interval timer IC that is Intel's 8254 and this is very similar to 8253 IC. Now in this video we will discuss the introduction and the block and pin diagram of the 8253 and 8254 in IC. So here is the introduction. Programmable interval timer IC is used to achieve the operations done by uh, processors that involves timing operations and delay operations and counting operations basically. So these operations we have already discussed in previous lecture that uh, these counting and delay can be done by programming. In software programming, the delay is achieved by decrementing or incrementing the value of the registers using instructions. Uh, we have discussed uh, the delay is achieved by three in three different categories single register using a register pair and using a loop with a loop. So these three um, programming techniques can provide us the required amount of delay. But what is the disadvantage in this uh, in these uh, three techniques is that uh, the processor is logged basically the processor is locked in the delay loop and this this processor which need to be uh, need to do basic uh, operations arithmetic and logical operations basic processings instead of doing that it got stuck into the processing which is unwanted kind of unwanted why because uh, we are simply counting and incrementing or decrementing or basically uh, processing should be like some arithmetic or logical operation should be performed some useful operation should be done by processor but in in the case when it is uh, the program is written uh, in uh, calculating the delay and the required amount of delay then in that case the processor is not actually working uh, in the arithmetic and logical operations Although the counting and delay is also um, achieved by some incrementing and decrementing operations, that is uh, nothing but the arithmetic operation. But but still, there is uh, what we actually want. If there is some, there is a separate device that calculate delay, that provide timing, so that the processor should not waste its precious time for processing in just calculation of doing in in just doing the calculation of delay so this can be avoided if we use some other kind of ic that is 8254 or 8253 in um, uh, programmable interval timer ic so the timing in operations can be achieved using the 555 ic this is basically a timer ic but the difficulty is to control the timing signals and the interfacing with the microprocessor. So instead of doing uh, using a triple five IC, we should use uh, eight two five three and eight two five four ICs that are specifically uh, used for programmable timer devices. Now these devices can be programmed can be separately programmed to generate different types of delay signals and also the count external signals. So basically, if we are using 8253 or 8254 IC, that is basically the programmable interval timer, what we are going to do is we are generating the timing circuits, uh, timing um, signals, control signals and delay signals using not the processor 8085, but using a simple programmable and dedicated IC to calculate the interval um, time intervals or counting and delay signals. So we separately use 8253 and 8254 just to calculate the delay, just to calculate the uh, count signals, just to calculate to have a, a timer uh, signals. Okay. What are the features? The features uh, that why we basically uh, terming these two ICs as 8253 and 8254. 
the internal architecture and the diagram is exactly same. The only thing that is different on these two ICs is that the operating frequency. So if um, we talk about 8253, then it can operate up to a maximum of 2.6 megahertz frequency, mm -hmm. but uh, 8253, 8254 can work up to a maximum of 8 megahertz frequency. So there is a difference between the operating frequency. Every single thing other than that is same for both the ICs. We used to generate the accurate time delay using these ICs. Uh, in, these, uh, in these two ICs, we have three independent 16-bit down converters. These are called as channels. 16-bit down converters, these are called as channels. Six different programmable operating modes. Um, starting from mode zero to mode five, we have six different programmable operating modes to um, operate these two ICs. These two IC can be used to provide the timer and counter operations. This count can be binary number or can be a BCD number, binary code decimal number. This can also be used to interrupt the processor. Obviously, uh, 8255, if we have talked uh, the 8255, this is basically uh, the interfacing um, device uh, IC. When we use this 8255 IC for interfacing with the microprocessor along with a peripheral device, then to get a signal from peripheral device, we should interrupt the microprocessor so that it can halt or uh, wait the current processing and handle the interrupts. So based on these interrupts, basically, these uh, peripheral device signals can be uh, sent to or from the processor. The, the similar way in which we can uh, send the signals generated from 8253 and 8254 to microprocessor by using the interrupt. So the processing is exactly the same. And it's a single plus five volt power supply. It needs only six uh, single um, five volt power supply. Okay, so this is the block diagram. Uh, this block diagram includes a, an internal bus. This is the internal bus. This is the internal bus of the um, 8254 or 8253 single processor. And uh, again, similar to 8255, we have a data bus buffer here as well to connect the internal bus of the 8254 or 8253 along with the data bus of the microprocessor. So it's an 8085 microprocessor. It is the end, uh, the connection towards 8255 microprocessor, right? So the data can flow uh, either from or to the 8055 microprocessor, 8085 uh, microprocessor, right? And uh, we have uh, discussed that we have three counters, uh, counter zero, counter one, and counter two. And these three counters have these three signals, clock, gate, and output. So if we talk about counter number zero, that means clock zero, gate zero, and out zero. Similarly, for clock one, gate one, and out one, we have the signals for counter number one. And uh, clock two, gate two, and counter two, out two, is uh, the signals for counter number two. Now, these three counters can be controlled by the control register that is separately controlled by read and write logic of the 8254. So this read and write logic has a separate control word register. And these control word register controls the operations performed by these three counters. The data can come from the, micro, the control word register and can obviously can be written into the control word register. So the data can flow in either direction. And to control the read and write logic, we have five different control signals. The first and foremost is chip select, that is CSPAR signal. The other two are read and write signals. And what the two most important is to select the counters. So we basically have three counters in zero, one, and two. So to select these three counters, we need at least two uh, address lines. So address lines that are similar to 8085 and, and 8086, that is A0 and A1. Okay. Now this is the pin detail, pin diagram of um, the 8254 IC. First discuss the, uh, the this side of the processor, this 8253 and 8254. They both are similar. So it's 8254 and 8253, they both are same exactly. The only difference is that the operating frequency at which the device is 8253 and 8254 are operating. Okay, for 8253, it's 2.6 megahertz maximum, and for 8254, it's 8 megahertz maximum, right? 
So uh, these uh, these three signals are associated with the counter number zero, counter number one, and counter number two. So this is for zero, this is for one, this is for two. The clock and the gate are the inputs to the counter, and output is the output to the counter. So we have two input signals for the counter and one output signal for the counter. The other most important thing is to interface the microprocessor. We need a data bus because actually data is transferred from or to the uh, processor towards or from the 8253. So it uh, has to be connected with the um, data bus of the internal uh, internal data bus of the microprocessor and internal data bus of the sorry internal data bus of the processor 82 uh, the device that is 8253 and the data bus or the data pins of 825 805 uh, these uh, chip select signals and a0 a1 signals and read write signals are uh, uh, used to select the counters select the chip as well as select uh, the operations that is read and write operations so uh, we have three, three, six, and three, nine, nine pins, nine and eight, seven, nine and eight, that is 17 and two, 19, 120 and two, 22, right? And the two other pins, that is VCC and ground. So it is basically a 24 pin uh, IC. So these D0 to D7, we have eight pins, this eight pins for the D7 to D0. Now clock one, gate one and out one, clock two, gate two and out two and clock zero, gate zero and out zero. These are the pins for the channel. So three channels, we have nine pins. So this three plus three plus three, that is nine pins. So uh, nine plus eight, that is 17 pins we have discussed so far. Now read and write, A0 and A1 and chip select. These are five pins to uh, read and write logic and control controlling the whole operation of the chip. So these five pins are associated uh, or given here. From pin number 19 to pin number 23 and the two pins which are required uh, to operate the 8254 uh, or 8253 is the vcc or it's any general ic is basically the vcc and ground so we have uh, 24 uh, pins for this 8254 okay now uh, this introduction part the block diagram part and the uh, 8254 uh, pin details or 8253 pin details is completed uh, in the next video, we'll discuss the modes of, of operations and the control words. Okay, so till then, goodbye.